All right. Good morning. It is a very early morning. Um, this video is for chapter 12, the second half of it, um, beginning with angular phased arrays. Now, remember when we when we learn about transducers, how we're going to learn these things. The registry and my tests are going to ask specific questions geared towards um, how many how many crystals does it have, how is it focused, how is it steered, what's the image shape, what happens when the crystal goes out, um, the arrangement of the crystals, design basically. That's all they care about. That's, that's all there is to know about it. Because um, there's only certain things we can do with each one and there's limitations that follow. So again this is the continuation of chapter 12 so when you study these things we're going to ask things like angular phased array. Look at your pictures in the book follow along with these reviews because it's very important you understand visually as well as the literature. Um, figure 12, 17, 12, 18. Angular phased arrays have multiple ring shaped elements with a common center, a bullseye target. They appear disc-like in shape. Beam steering is mechanical. Again, like the, like the mechanical transducer, this is the second probe that we learned uses a motor to actually rotate the crystals. Not a slinky, or not my hand, but an actual motor. So therefore it is mechanical, it's that old-fashioned steering. Beam focusing, <clears throat> now this is multi-focusing. It is not adjustable because remember each ring has its own focus and the outer ring is the deepest, the inner a little bit more shallow, inner again to the center is the shallowest, correct? So it's the specific answer is multi-focusing. Uh, the image shape is fan or sector. It's going to be that wedge shape. If you damage a crystal, only a portion of the image is lost. I'm going to ask more specifically which portion and so is the registry. It's important to know that it's only a portion and not the entire image but with the angular rings, remember, each ring creates an image at each depth, or part of the image at each depth, so it's going to be layered. So if a damaged crystal, you have, you have a, a dropout that appears horizontal or side to side at whatever particular depth. The innermost is the most superficial, the outermost is the deepest. All right, let's move on to linear sequential arrays. This is a larger acoustic footprint. The image shape is rectangular. Now, when you study these, remember the names, um, linear sequential array. You know what each one of those means, okay? So we immediately relate sequential to sequence or groups. So it's no longer like a linear phased array, which was individual lines, these are groups all lined up. So again, it's a larger acoustic footprint. We now have a rectangular shape that the image shape is. The image shape is now rectangular that we create. Sorry, it's early. <clears throat> uh, there's 120 to 250 rectangular strips of PZT material arranged side by side along the face of the transducer. The number is not important here. The, the fact that you just know the, the arrangement is the most important. Now what is important is each crystal is about one wavelength in width. But from here on out for these transducers we understand that they're, they're all the same. They're all one wavelength in width. As technology improved we realize that crystals being one wavelength and width was perfect and we didn't change that. 
So beam steering for a linear sequential array is electronic. Now, please don't get confused by some, but not all are fired simultaneously. That just means they're not fired all at the same time, okay? Crystals are fired in groups. They're directed straight ahead. It's the same thing. It's the same thing as we had with linear array transducers, except we went one step further and we just fired them in groups all down the line, creating a wave. And I'm going to draw you an example. Remember, just like in the book, this is now not one at a time, but groups fired directly down the transducer path. Look at figure 12, 22. Beam focusing, uh, older models were fixed because they used a lens in front of the active element. Uh, they had versions of external and internal. They either put a lens in front of each tiny crystal and then again fired them in groups or they used, they cut the PZT in the shape of a curve, which is, in, which is internal and and that's not as important as the modern transducers because we're learning these as technology advanced so these engineers got together and decided hey if we can with a linear phased array if we can control the electronics and and you know use the beam former to focus and to steer why can't we do it with these we're just doing it in groups so modern models use electronic focusing there's electronical spike patterns or electronic electronical electrical <laughs> spike patterns within each group figure 1224 shows that so so each little group remember the table 1 table 2 table 3 table 4 example each group had their own electrical spike pattern sequential arrays also use time delays during reception. That's just the simple concept of dynamic receive focusing. Remember, it's just a delay pattern. Instead of delaying things during transmission to make things happen, we also do this, the same thing upon reception. And it just slows down everything a little bit so that we don't hear everybody's story all at once to get the information. We get one at a time. Uh, the image shape again is rectangular. The image, remember, is never wider than the transducer. However, it can be smaller. It just can never be wider. And 1225 shows that. A rectangular image created by a linear sequential array transducer. Uh, the damaged PZT. Now again, only a portion of the image is lost. There is a dropout that extends directly below the affected element. It is now a vertical line. Um, so even if they're fired in groups of 10, if one crystal goes out, then the whole party stops for that group of 10. So it's just the idea that think of it as whichever crystal is affected, that group, there's a dropout from that transducer down, from that crystal down, excuse me. And 1226 shows that. So Again, we ask ourselves, just to validate what we're learning, why are all the elements fired in groups instead of one at a time? Well, because if they were fired at one at a time, if they were fired one at a time, the beam would quickly diverge and have poor lateral resolution. Or remember, remember Huygens wavelets; um, those little tiny pieces of crystal all together would interfere with each other very quickly, and you would have a, a shallower focus and so the beam would diverge way in the far field you wouldn't have a nice uniform even beam you wouldn't be able to control it as much whereas it's sort of like letting you all go to lunch at the same time it's it's sort of chaotic but it's it's a little organized and I can deal with it but if if I let you go two at a time it's organized, it's, I can control it, I have more uniformity, if you will. They're, 
when fired in groups, Huygens principle occurs and the beam is directional and more defined. It's just a concept. I don't know that I would even test you on this. I just want you to understand it. It just kind of helps you grasp these ideas that these engineers, okay, this all we're doing is simple, simple little changes and we, we get better and better and better. So can linear sequential array transducers steer sound beams electronically? And you should say absolutely positively 100% 100 yes. Why? Well we're using electronics and I just got through saying I can use electronics to focus it so why can't I steer it? So this form of beam steering, electronic beam steering, creates a parallelogram shape image rather than rectangular images. So if I have a beam, my I'm going to draw a few pictures here, bear with me. And I just want you to understand the shape, not necessarily the direction, but with the use of electronics, if that's just straight down, okay, then if I use my electronics to steer everything to the right, my table just tilts, right? So that is now not, that is no longer a rectangle, it is a parallelogram. And the same thing goes for the left. It's just steered. So it is now a parallelogram. So if I show you one of those images, I could, I could ask you, this is a picture, this is an image created with a linear sequential array transducer. Is the beam steered? Yes. Or how is the beam steered uh, with linear sequential array transducers electronically? What image does it create? A parallelogram. See how straightforward those questions are. Uh, we just use sloped time delays, just like with linear phase arrays. Um, <clears throat> the the curve when we get to the curved, convex, or curvilinear array transducers, the same thing applies with the linear sequential. They're arranged, however, in a in a in a, a bowed or bowed or curved shape. It's just that the transducers curve. These are the abdominal pros. Operational characteristics similar to the linear array, linear arrays. They're rectangular shaped strips of PZT. They're arranged side by side. It's a large acoustic footprint. They're one wavelength in width. The beam steering um, is the same. Uh, the curvature of the transducer, however, dictates the direction of each beam. So we no longer have the beam being steered it, they're, it's steered, I'm sorry, It's they're directed straight down, but, and let me draw the picture so you understand, but the groups as they fire, and forgive my quick drawing, they're now no longer in a straight line, but these, because of how they're faced, or how they're laying on the curvature of the transducer, creates that. So you understand that. Beam focusing, electronic focusing, just like linear array probes, they also use the dynamic receive focusing. It's the same thing, the same principles. All it is is instead of lining up your crystals flat along the face of the transducer, it's they're now curved. They're on a little a hump, if you will. Image shape, though, however, is now a blunted sector shape because of that curvature of the crystal. So it's a it's a it's a blunted sector. It's a sector with a bite taken out of the top. So if this is a sector and I bite the top out of it, that is a blunted sector. Damaged PZT crystal only a portion again of the image is lost. It is a vertical line extending below the extending below the affected crystal. So you understand the questions here and the principles. It's exactly how they're going to ask it. Uh, I'm going to continue this lecture 
on vector arrays because I am out of time so I will be back.